All right, thank you for staying with the Monday Report, sending your views and questions at Trevor and Bidia at Citizen TV Kenya. Use the hashtag Monday Report. We're having a conversation on the floods disaster that's facing the current the situation in the country right now. In fact, we've just gotten an update from the government spokesperson that the death toll is now at 166. We had earlier on reported 156. That means there's 10 more to the numbers. Honorable Isaac Moura, the government spokesperson, is joining us from Mombasa. With me in studio now is Peter Murugor, the disaster risk reduction manager, Kenya Red Cross. Thank you for making time. And Philip Omondi, the senior climate scientist at IGAD Climate Prediction and Application Center. Let me start with Honorable Moura on this. There, there seems to be that there was prior warning to this, Moura. And how come the government has dropped the ball? Yeah, maybe let me just clarify from what I've just heard you say. The official number is 160. 169. Please, let, let, let us note there. 169. There are 66 individuals, uh, 169, okay. who have now been reported to have lost uh, their lives, and that includes 60 uh, adults and six children. And also, uh, let me also clarify very clearly, uh, so that it is very clear, the Maimahio uh, clarification uh, on uh, how many Kenyans may have lost their lives, uh, is ongoing, so the number is not final, but the official number now that we have is 45. But 45. this is, may, may be may bound to change based on, uh, on, uh, on, on what we continue, I mean, whatever is happening at the hospitals, and we pray that nobody else loses their lives. So that is, it. it's 169 officially, uh, because we have 66 new cases today, including 45 confirmed in Maimahio, and the rest are in various regions. For example, if you allow me, uh, Tharakanidhi, uh, has lost one individual. Uh, we also have a new tally from Tanda River of four. Uh, all of the way, like we have another three from Moranga. Uh, today we have two from uh, Sindo in the Suba South. So all of that now is coming to 169. Okay, that is clarified yes. now. But how come the government seems to have missed a step on this one? Because the indication is that there was prior warning and the government seems to be now reacting too late. Uh, Trevor, uh, to be very honest, uh, nobody can say one can be fully prepared uh, for any form of disaster. Uh, and government has always been uh, doing its best, but let's also accept one thing, and this is not about shifting blame, this is a reality. We always have rains between uh, March, April, and May. We always do have rains, my um, uh, fellow Kenyans, but then they are now above normal because of the fact that, ladies and gentlemen, of climate change. This uh, you know, flooding is because now we are getting more than normal rainfall. And we've come from dealing with the El Nino rainfall. That also is a big, big issue. Uh, to the extent that then uh, we had to deal with that. It was an emergency. It wrecked havoc across the country. But now uh, this one has come. Of course, there was, there was warning. Uh, but then, of course, we couldn't quite anticipate that. And you see, most of these, uh, uh, you know, you know, you know, deaths and also destruction is because people have built in riparian areas, for example. So if you look at some of the areas affected, they are basically, you know, waterways. Even when you look at uh, Maimahio, it's, it's actually a water gully, you know, that had accumulated too much water, and then, of course, it had the effect of a dam, uh, so that it went downstream. So, and it's human, human-made. So you can see that. If you look at even some of the, the, the blockages, they are actually uh, from the way ourselves. So we need just to take serious actions as Kenyans, uh, so that then we are able also not just to wait for disaster. And, and, and just proper urban planning, uh, you know, is very critical, uh, you know, going forward, and also, these key infrastructural, you know, issues to do with the, like water, 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 you know, harvesting, you know, facilities and what have you. So, so basically, uh, that is it. But we are there, uh, and it's good to tell you we are actually uh, on it. We've had several uh, meetings. That is why, uh, you know, I, I'm not in Nairobi. I'm in the coastal region. Uh, you know, deployed here to ensure that we take charge here. Uh, this morning, I have had a meeting uh, with the county government, with the Red Cross here, with the regional commissioner and, and the people, the DCC, uh, the Tana River Reports and Water Bureau. Uh, you saw the deputy president in Maimahio together with the CS Malonza yeah. and PS uh, Kelo Harsama. 
Uh, we're expecting uh, many senior government officials, including, uh, you've seen even the first lady and uh, the spouse to the deputy president, yes. all so, of them going out to help where they can, and you'll be seeing more action. So, Maura, Ma Maura, is it that the government doesn't believe its own scientists from the meteorological department, or is it there's too much bureaucracy that response time is then hampered? Because this was warned earlier on, and you've just admitted yourself saying that there was prior warning. Uh, yes, I, I am saying yes, there was, but remember also, we've just come from dealing with the Nino crisis, you know, my, my brother. Now this is another issue as well. Yes, of course, uh, uh, and, and I also told you that you cannot be 100% uh, prepared, uh, but we are doing something, we are, we are there, on, we believe in our professionals. And also, I would want to really also take this opportunity, uh, you know, to call upon members of parliament uh, to fast track the passage of the disaster risk reduction bill, which has been pending, so that we galvanize this whole issue of disaster management properly and anchored it into law, so that also, uh, Trevor, we also have professional disaster professionals, you know, joining government, uh, so that then we are more adaptive to this, because we just need to professionalize the whole aspect of disaster management. And despite that, uh, we are actually on it because uh, we have actually deployed the military. Uh, the, the head of the command center at the national level is Major Koimo, uh, my son. We have, uh, you know, the, 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 the police also very much engaged, the NYS. Uh, you yeah. know, all of the apparatus of government, we have actually a public health uh, you know, operation center at KNH that is on standby. We are ready. We have already started distributing food uh, to the to, to, to the, the, the two affected counties. We are having actually a two-month program, rollout program, yeah. uh, you, know, you know, that has already commenced. Uh, so, but we are prioritizing places like Muranga, uh, uh, in Badioya, in Yandarwa, yeah. uh, in, uh, in Sindo, uh, in Migori, in Tana River, uh, you know, all of the way in Garissa, okay. because we have mapped out where there are challenges yeah. you know, going forward. Initially, there were 23 counties affected, then they came to 40, it's all, uh, all over, but the most dire are actually 32. So 32. we are on top of it. Okay, now how much of the 1 billion shillings committed by the government has already been disbursed? Uh, you know, um, you know, we are we, we, we have uh, limited resources. Uh, let me say this, uh, uh, Trevor, because we the emergency f uh, resources that we had were actually used a lot during El Nino, and, and that is a reality. Uh, but then we are working around how to reallocate resources from uh, previous budgets so that we are able now to have you know this uh, contingency fund uh, you know replenished for this work. So already we we have already discussed. Uh, you know, on how to, to, to share the resources. The requests that have come are way beyond what uh, uh, we have as a country, but we will manage because we have rationalized so that we start with the most, you know, uh, needy areas and uh, going forward as we try to also improve on our, you know, you know on how we are going to, uh, to, to, to deploy. Remember, this is actually a two-month exercise. So we are okay making decisions day by day based on the current situation on the ground. So the money has not been disbursed yet? Uh, you know, uh, the, the money is already committed, but there are government procedures to be followed, and there is also the, there are procedures that are followed during emergency, uh, Trevor. Okay. Let me bring in on uh, Murugori. The money here. is already there and it's available. Yes. Okay. Murugori, yeah. what missteps are you seeing when it comes to dealing with disaster as a country? Looking at the situation we are in, there's the El Nino, now we are facing floods, and we know for sure we'll be facing drought. Um, I think it's a couple of issues, Trevor, and thank you for having us to have this discussion. Today being one of a very sad day because we're seeing many people having lost their lives to the impacts of flood. Um, missteps, if we are to have this conversation, it, we need to look at it holistically. There is the behavioral aspect, and I want to speak to Kenyans to resonate with what our very own Wangari Mathai once said, that nature is very unforgiving. You destroy it, it comes back mercilessly. And so when we talk about, I'm giving that background to just give a basis that when we talk about climate change, when we talk about the effects we are seeing of flooding, um, when we talk about waterways being affected, you want to ask yourselves, who are these along the waterways? When you want to talk about drainages being clogged or uh, water paths being obstructed, who are doing this? So, um, and then also our infrastructural systems 
uh, policies, and I'm very ha happy I had uh, Honorable Moura talk about this, and I can confirm we've been in conversation, including with Honorable Moura. In fact, as a matter of fact, this week alone we were to be in Naivasha doing the disaster risk management uh, strategy for the disaster risk management bill to just push those. So policies that are in place that enable and enforce some of these things. Um, we've come a long way and we're in a good place. Uh, Philip Egard, the Kenya Meteorological Department, the weathermen are doing a very fantastic job. We are now having credible focus with very good precision. I think we still need to make a lot of strides in adapting and believing and acting as per the credible forecast being released. That's one of the biggest challenges that is there. From the forecast and the advisories being released to whichever part of the body you want to take, taking that information and acting upon the information is another issue altogether. And I think that's where the crack begins. Yeah. Because for example, and how do I mean when I say this, if people who are along waterways and you're aware you're along a waterway, you see an early warning or a credible focus saying that there are going to be rains, and in fact KMD has gone an extra step to even give you the likely impacts. We see that, but we don't act. We just wait until it's now a sorry state. That's misstep number one. Mm -hmm. And maybe bodies that would have been acting to support this, and we've grown, we are much more closer now. Collaboration is getting better. Yeah. Uh, government is doing a lot of efforts. Uh, well-wishers, humanitarian agencies, we have really improved and grown in how we are doing it, but we can still do better in the uptake of early warning and credible forecasts. Yeah, but is the other issue the resource deployment bureaucracy? Because many, many people try to source for the money once the calamity or the disaster is already here with us and everybody is dealing with their own situation. Should we have a situation where we have isolated money for certain instances? Because even now, Erumundi was speaking to us earlier and said, we are going to face drought. We already know this now. Absolutely. I can confirm the Lanina phenomenon that is coming soon. Yeah, but uh, again, it goes to policy, Trevor, because um, that you're saying the right thing. In, in, in scientific terms or in uh, technical sides, we normally call it anticipatory action, yeah. and we call it focus-based financing. What you're talking about is focus-based financing, allocating cash for ready action based on a credible forecast. We are used to acting when we hear Serikali's idea. We are used to acting when yeah. we see gory images in the screen and then we feel this situation is dire. But like you're rightly saying, we need now to be able to have resources to kick in action based on a credible forecast to reduce the impacts. Because if we had resources already allocated to take action before the adverse effects, we will be using lesser money. In fact, research shows that for every early action taken, yeah. if we were to spend $4, we spend one and save three. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. What, how does the outlook look like, Omundi, for the entire continent? Because there's also been people saying that this, you cover the entire continent. Well, uh, <clears throat> let me correct uh, that uh, we don't uh, cover the entire continent, mm. but we cover the entire great town of Africa. Okay. They got member countries, plus Kenya, uh, plus uh, Tanzania, Rwanda, and Burundi. Okay. Yeah, but, how does uh, it look like? Uh, the, 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 region, the western part of the great town of Africa is uh, absolutely wet. And as Honorable Mawara said, mm -hmm. we are coming from a wet season. So you only need a small amount of water over land and then flooding takes place. Yeah. So when we are giving forecast, we had this one clearly spelled out that we are coming from a wet season and we are get, going to a, another wet season. So we expect uh, a double effect. Yeah. So and this is what we are seeing currently. So based on the predictions now, which sides of the country will be most affected? Already uh, the eastern side is uh, affected, from Nairobi going to the eastern highlands. Uh, the western part, which is traditionally uh, very wet and flooding, takes place along, along Kano area, apparently this time is not as bad as with the eastern part. And this is due to the fact I had explained earlier on that we have a gradient pushing moisture. The only notion is already warm, so evaporation takes place. So if we have wind that pushes that, to onshore, then this is what we are, cu are currently seeing. So from Atlantic Ocean and Indian Ocean, they are pushing one another. Then where they meet, there is rising. When it rises up, that is what forms cloud and comes down as rain. Okay. So a lot of uh, moisture coming from western, eastern side, because we have also what we call Indian Ocean Diapole. This is a phenomenon in the Indian Ocean. It is uh, positive now. And when it is positive, it pumps a lot of uh, moisture from the Indian Ocean on land.
Okay. And this is exactly what we're seeing. So two moisture meeting over the highlands, eastern uh, of the Rift Valley, is what we are currently seeing now. Okay. Honorable Moura, let me bring you back on this. There's a question here from a viewer who says that uh, when Moura says that they have been dealing with El Nino, which El Nino is he talking about exactly? Isn't this it, or am I confused? No, no, no. You see, uh, uh, Trevor, there was a Nino uh, phenomenon, uh, you know, uh, late last year up to you know, this year, uh, and uh, that is what really. And, and let me explain uh, also. There is always budgeting for emergency. We have a, what we call the civil contingency fund, uh, you know, and uh, the resources that are allocated there are quite, um, uh, they may not be as adequate uh, to, you know, measure uh, the accident because by the time you get a disaster, it's usually more than maybe what you have actually projected because, you know, you cannot quite, you know, say, for example, uh, this number of roads are going to be destroyed, this number of what are going to, those, that kind of thing. And I believe that uh, in the spirit of Kaizen that we, we need to have a situation where we keep on improving on how we, we predict the magnitude of whatever a, you know, situation that we may find ourselves. But yes, if you look at the budgeting uh, process, uh, there is actually a civil contingency fund at the national level and also at the county level. And that is, those are the resources that were largely used uh, on El Nino. And also right now, as I have said very clearly, as you know, you have the figure there, uh, we are going to reallocate more resources uh, because there is a clear you know, process of budgeting. Yeah. But how will you do this? Because there are many people saying it's the rigors and the vicious circle that you're in that delays the disbursement of the money. For example, even the El Nino funds that you're talking about earlier on, it was projected to be 10 billion and then later on the deputy president came back and told the counties that now we're not going to give you the money, everybody to use their own development cash. How will this money be disbursed? Uh, let me first explain the demand for the resources around El Nino was more than the civil contingency fund. So the deputy president was explaining to counties even them, they also have the emergency funds that they should also be able to reallocate or repl uh, replenish if at all they had used for various other emergencies because emergencies is not just El Nino or the, the floods as we see. It could be a fire, it could be any other thing. Uh, a disaster can be, you know, in many forms. And then now, then it can just be within, the, because we have a very limited resource envelope. Uh, you know, let us just accept that as a country. This is not something new. Uh, we are trying just to get out of the hole as a country and that, but, for sure, for sure, I want to assure you, uh, uh, Trevor Mbinja, we spent quite a number of resources around the El Nino, providing for food, uh, you know, non-food items, blankets, trying to reconstruct roads, uh, you know, quite a number of, of places, you know, schools and all of those uh, water, water sources. Uh, so that was used in, in that regard. And then now we have this. And, 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 and this is also something that I also need to emphasize, uh, yeah. you know, going forward, that when you have a, a talk about climate change, it is real. Uh, you know, so that we also now have climate uh, financing, you know, uh, in terms of the effects, uh, the after effects uh, of this uh, global warming and all that phenomenon. It yeah. is extremely important. It is extremely uh, important. And this kind of professionalization, uh, pol uh, you know, putting into place policy, having a law is a work in progress yeah. that we all must come together. And also as an Africa, you know, uh, and claim, yeah. uh, you, know, you know, our rightful role in terms of, you know, having the effects of, uh, you know, other people developments and water bill so that then we are able to mitigate uh, the effects when they, they affect because it is highly okay. disruptive as we speak now yeah. uh, many children were not able to go to school uh, many learners as we speak now you know transport has been disrupted so it, it really changes the whole issue of the economy even when for example the economy had just started to recover you can see our dollar had gone down the cost of living yeah. uh, you know has, has gone down then all of a sudden this happens you know that that then is a very major cause uh, for alarm uh, okay. you know for us so it, it is well, something that we really need to do Mora, uh, together so that then we are able question. to get it right. Mora, and, there's a of question course, here. Uh, building on what we are already working there's on. A, there's a question here from Riungu. She says, for Isaac Moura, until last evening, the government hadn't given a directive on schools reopening in the middle of the Friday crisis. Mm -hmm. What was the deputy president thinking when he announced three days ago that the school calendar remained unchanged despite the deadly flooding? Then the Mashogu statement pronounced in the middle of the night, finding some of the learners already in school, some on their way to schools, many more confused. This is not the way to run a government. We really can do better. Do you agree? I disagree totally because we had a meeting uh, last week on Friday, uh, the National Emergency uh, Response uh, you know, Committee uh, that is chaired by the, His Excellency the Deputy President. 
And we had that question in mind way in advance. And at that point, the position was that we get schools to apply as to whether they should remain closed until the situation improves. And, and so it was on a school need by need basis. That was the position then. And it was good because remember, we've just come from having uh, challenges around the, the school calendar because of the COVID. And it's just normalized, I think, uh, you, know, you know, just recently. And then um, you now have this situation. But then what happened, because we had a system where you know, schools could report to us uh, using the, 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 the education infrastructure and, and uh, com uh, command, send, you know, command chain, uh, we got so many requests from across the country. Remember, it's 47 counties. And if you look, for example, at the statistics that I've given here today, already you can see out of the 66 uh, today that uh, have, uh, have lost their life, we have six children. Now, you, you know, if we have 60 adults now, it's because maybe there's limited movement. But then when children are going daily to school, when there are flash floods, when there are mudslides, when there are all of this, you are likely, you know, to, 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 to you know, have, you know, cause more harm. Yeah. So it was good for that intervention to come very late because it means it was not done carelessly. But why at 1 a.m.? After a lot of consultations. More at 1 a.m. Uh, after a lot of listening? consultations, uh, 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 Trevor. Yes, we know. By the way, Trevor, better late than never. Because if today, eh, today, for example, uh, you know, we had a whole school, you know, uh, a boarding school, for example, that was on the pathway of the, of the water gully, uh, the water from uh, Kiambu that way, on, went all the way to, uh, to my, my Mahio, and then uh, children were affected and we lost lives, we would be blaming the same government. So we would rather uh, to, be, to, be, to be forewarned, we would rather take precautionary measures than come to regret later. But I don't you think know this earlier? This is the in question my humble that parents are asking. Uh, Trevor, I don't, I, 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 don't, I don't think in my humble submission that uh, the fact that that was set late at night is, is anything to worry. Because government can take action any time for the safety of fellow Kenyans. That it is, is a caring government. because some students are already in school right now and parents are saying they don't know where the children are because by the time they are getting the information, the children are already gone to school. So this is a cause of worry. Didn't the government know this earlier? There is, no, no. It's not a question of the government knowing earlier. The government took action late to protect the lives and to ensure the safety in the best interest of the child as per the, uh, the Children's Act. So it is lawful. Number two, if already uh, students are already in school and they are safe, then they can be accounted for by the administration. Right? So they don't need to travel back again and be endangered. You know, that is very, very important. Because already, you can now gauge and say, these are the people. But then, those that are yet to travel, they can stay and wait, so that then we, re we reduce, we minimize uh, this movement when, uh, obviously, you can see. By the way, Trevor, you ask yourself why we have done so. Because you are seeing part of this death toll that we are reporting, for example, the death toll was 54, but it increased to 70 because of an accident uh, in Baringo. Now you've seen again what has happened in, uh, in, in Tana River. Again, suppose also these are students and teachers uh, that are moving across waters, and you know children are more vulnerable. Do you want to say that we don't just take any action? So it is very responsible what the CS Ezekiel Machogo has done. There's another question here. Has the government mapped out areas where there are likely to be mudslides to avert such disasters, or are they waiting for the mudslides to, res to, res to react? <laughs> no, no, no. We have already done so. Uh, there are about eight uh, prone areas as, a, as we speak, and we are taking measures to ensure that, because we are not just waiting. There are places that are prone, like in Murana, uh, you know, that, that is very well known. Uh, there is also an incident that happened uh, in uh, the Goto in Kikuyu. So there are places that are known very well that, uh, you know, give in uh, to, 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 to a lot of um, water, you know, because then the, work, the, uh, the aquifer cannot uh, uh, maintain water because of the El Nino and all of those kind of things that have been happening. So we already know that, and we, that's why we are advising, first and foremost, uh, uh, Trevor, my brother, so that then somebody can actually take action so that kind of awareness, and we are very glad uh, that the media has actually joined us in this uh, awareness. In fact, uh, they have actually given free, you know, you know, you know, airtime, uh, and that is a commitment they made on Friday when we were getting the brief. Uh, and also just to continue, um, uh, you know, ensuring that we have, you know, those camps. They are 50. Uh, they may have increased, and we need to get the tally by tomorrow, okay. uh, so that people know where to go. So you don't just tell people to move to higher ground. You also tell them where to go. But also, even Kenyans just helping a fellow Kenya here and there. Yes. Okay, the there's a question here from Gloria. It says, Trevor, ask Honorable Maura, how much do they have right now? 
because there was a conversation of having 1 billion shillings and then the deputy president said it's 4 billion shillings. How much do they have and how are they going to ensure the money is used prudently? Thank you very much. Uh, we have gotten uh, requests uh, totaling to several billions. How much? Now, the EU government, because of a limited resource envelope, has rationalized that budget. And it is estimated, as the Deputy President has correctly said, to be, what we require for this uh, emergency response is about four billion. So as and when, because that is a work in progress, uh, because we may have estimated it now, but then tomorrow we require more or less, that will be ascertained, and the resources are not just distributed because they've been requested. Let me, let, me, let me assure you, they are very well planned because we do not have an abundance of resources. So therefore, we have more needs than actually what we can supply. Yeah. Please get it right. And that then, therefore, is what ensures prudence because we will say, for example, all of the 47 counties are affected, but then who, which are the neediest? And then we, do, we say it's 32. They are, they are mud, prone, mudslide prone areas. Which ones are most affected? The eight, you know. So that way, when you have a limited resource envelope, then there's prudence, of course. Okay. Uh, 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 we, of course, have uh, very strong measures that any, any public official who misuses uh, resources because of this emergency, then they are taking action. We have the ESCC, we have the DPP, and okay. that then becomes a, a corruption case, a criminal case. Yeah. And the president the is very much on, on record yeah. about corruption. Uh, and I don't want to, to, to re-emphasize the issue of Mambo Nibatatu. So that is very clear. But this uh, administration is very forthright. Okay. I, I don't think you have had uh, you know, any scandal so far uh, uh, coming out of the El Nino emergency response. Uh, uh, just like, for example, sometimes you had about COVID. This administration is very strict okay. on how public well, resources are There's used. another question here. I'm trying to squeeze in as many questions from the people as possible. Steve Juma says, where are these safe places that the government is directing affected families to move to? This directive is causing an ease among families who are seeking refuge. Where do they move to? Uh, my, my brother, Trevor, uh, to respond to my fellow Kenyan there, I would want to say, yes, they are there. And I'm telling you, there are 50 camps already. Uh, like in Nairobi, we have the 12 social halls. Uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, in case of uh, a situation exacerbating, we were actually thinking of taking one of the NYS barracks near Madari. Madari. So, so they are there. They are in name, and of course, we will be advising. Uh, this is localized information that you can get according to where the area is affected. For example, today we are saying that you move uh, to the girls' secondary school in uh, in Maimahio, which is a command center and also rescue, uh, you know, center for the affected, uh, you know, people who are homeless now in Maimahio. So it's very very clear. Has these locations been communicated to the people in the 32 counties and each and every one of them knows where to go? Because the people we're speaking to on the ground say that they don't know where to go. Yes, they have been communicated to and they will continue to be communicated. And uh, Trevor, it's good to tell you that uh, already uh, we uh, uh, have actually 12 free numbers so that when you do not uh, know uh, where to go, you can actually call and be assisted. Uh, and uh, we have the national toll-free number, uh, which uh, anyone can call. And we have, for example, because Nairobi is the most affected right now, uh, a number that somebody can actually call so that then you do not get lost uh, in the melee. You know, that, that is very clear. Uh, and, and that is why, for example, you know, we are doing daily briefings so that then uh, we keep, keep on giving information. The, the national toll-free number is 0800-721-571. 0800-721-571. And the Nairobi one is 1508. These are very useful uh, so that then you can be assisted by the, uh, you know, the people who are 20, uh, manning the 24-hour uh, okay. operation of the National Disaster Operation Center. Right. And my office of the government spokesperson, which is the National Government Communication Center, remains open to give as much information so that we are able to improve on the situation so okay. that we don't... Uh, uh, get more loss of lives and property. There are a few more questions online I'll get to in just a bit, but let me bring in Murgor back into the discussion. Murgor, what are the do's and don'ts now that we're in this situation? So let's start with the family setup, okay? So there's a lot of rain, there's water coming into your house. What do you do? Um, yeah, and, and I like that question because it's about risk reduction now. How do we reduce the risks that could be associated with the flooding? Um, and I like that you've broken it down to the family level. First of all is be aware of your surrounding. 
be aware of where you are in terms of topography, in terms of exposure to flooding, in terms of the risk of mudslides, and also even your electricity systems. Number one is issues around electrocution. The first thing might be to switch off the electricity altogether. Um, the second thing we're encouraging people is to self-evacuate. These are some of the things you can do. Um, by the way, it's important to listen keenly and to follow the weather forecasts. Now they're using the social media platforms. They share them through WhatsApps. They share them through many, they've made information as available as possible. Media houses, you're doing a very great job making sure this information is out there. Uh, listen to your vernacular stations or even mainstreams like this one. Uh, when you get the credible forecast, please don't ignore it. Take it into account, use it to plan. What does planning mean? If you see that, and, and by the way, it's important for people to understand that floods in, in disaster, we call it a sudden onset. Sudden onset in the sense that when the, when the alert is there, you have very little time to act. It doesn't give you room to start thinking and say, I'll do it next week. So as soon as you get the alert, being aware of your environment, yeah. understanding who is in the house and how you can account for each other, how you can communicate with each other in case you're disconnected uh, from one another, because that could happen as you are moving away to maybe safe places. Yeah. Could you make arrangements with your relatives or people who are at safe places for that period of risk? But also something you need to do is, if you're around riparian land, if you're at a place, as we speak to you, Trevor, right now, our staff and volunteers are somewhere, currently right now in an operation, trying to get people who are refusing to move from a place that is at risk of flooding. Where is that? Um, it's somewhere around there, and, and, and they're trying to work around that. And I'm, and I'm getting information that they are trying to work with even the government and, and, and all that. So the people are simply refusing to? They're, yeah, they're just saying that uh, we will wait until we see this. So you see, this, these are the things we're experiencing on and on. So when you get this alert, please cooperate and move. Okay. Yeah, but what you don't do, yeah. please, if you're seeing you're already enough, a place where there's running water, don't get into it. Call for help, don't get into running water, don't get yourself into much trouble. By the way, you may think the level is very low, only for you to get there, and then you realize it's really heavy. That's why you see some cars being swept away, because people ignore and think it is very close. Yeah. Yeah? So do not ignore calls, do not ignore all the signs, do not get into running water. Regardless whether it's low, you know, the people used to say that if it reaches my knee. Yeah. But even ankle level water, if the, the, there's this what you say, sinking sand. So if it's loose soil and you go there, you get sunk yeah. and that you will be moved off, you know. You so even ankle reaching water, you shouldn't yes, attempt you would Yes, you would not know. Just simply don't get into it. Okay. Avoid it, get to safety. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. And assuming you're on the road now, that is the household level. So you're on the road, you're either driving or you're in a PSV and there's heavy rains. What do you do? Do you stop? Do you keep moving? What happens? Um, I think that needs a judgment call. It needs a judgment call based on where you are. First of all, how is your visibility? Um, how, is the, how is even the terrain? how much surface runoff water, we call it surface runoff water, is, what is the velocity of the water, are you able to maneuver at a pace that is safe? Mm. The all aspect here is safe. Okay. Are you feeling safe in the environment you're in? It's okay. a judgment call. Right. So if you're driving and you feel the pace is okay, the water is not a lot, yeah. you're not being moved off the road, just keep driving, but keep being very alert. Okay. If you get to a point where you realize that it's like the waters are increasing, it's better to park and be somewhere that you feel is safe. Okay. Yeah. Well, Mondi, as we wind up on this conversation, what do we expect going forward in terms of the weather patterns based on your prediction? Um, well, uh, it is not something that you can say as for now. Mm -hmm. uh, case by case. So from now, we have just come from El Nino. There are cases when we come from El Nino, we go to El Nino again. There are cases we come from La Nina, we go back to El Nino. So people must just wait until appropriate time because the systems keep on changing. Okay. And uh, Mark, you, uh, this uh, long range system, the systems are very chaotic. They are not easy to predict. Okay. So what we say is that we, pro we pro uh, provide forecast on uh, weekly, 10 days, monthly, seasonal, and we update them. Okay. So the best thing now is for people to keep abreast with the forecast and uh, the updates. All right. Otherwise, from now, we cannot say that uh, 2025 will be uh, dry or wet. Okay. So we have to wait so until... Yeah, not really. We have to wait until we are able to now use Predict. the predictors okay. to show that uh, the next season will uh, uh, appear in a certain way.
Okay. Let me bring in some of the feedback that coming, that's coming through. Just two more questions for Honorable Maura as we wind up on this conversation. There's a lot that's coming through, but let's sift them through. Trevor Mbija at Citizen TV Kenya. Use the hashtag Monday Report. Babu Michael says, please ask Mr. Maura, the government has set aside $4 billion on the current flood disaster response. How will this money be accounted for, considering that such monies have been mismanaged in the past? What structures have been put in place? I think he responded to that earlier on. Let's bring in another one here. Lynette says... Pose for me this question. Is it possible for the government to order people to relocate to safe places early enough to avoid loss of lives now that the weatherman normally informs them prior? What will they do during drought? Or more, you can respond to this as we wind up on this conversation. Is it possible for the government to order people to relocate to safer places early enough to avoid loss of lives? Yes, indeed. And as my brother who I've worked with uh, on the Disaster Risk Reduction Bill, since the 11th Parliament, by the way, with uh, my colleagues like uh, Mutula Kilonzo, uh, you know, Rachel Shebes and others, uh, and Idris, you know, there are quite a number of people that we've worked with on this one, uh, will tell you it's very interesting, like in Madare, uh, people are, are moving out when there is water, and then when it subsides a little bit, um, then they go back. Oh, surely. You know, so you, you can see now that's a challenge also. Can we just be more patriotic? Can we also uh, be people who can lo love life so that you don't just blame the government? Uh, let's just, uh, you know, do it. And also, by the way, uh, Trevor, on Friday, uh, the media, has, and I'm very proud because I know the media really supports us uh, as the Office of the Government Spokesperson, they offered, uh, uh, you know, uh, airtime worth 100 million for this, uh, you know. So I really would want to ask we get more inf informations because media is a very powerful tool. You have the channel, you have the people. So that we start now warning people and giving them the correct information and my office is open and ready to share even like those camps where they are specifically, how to be assisted, where is food being taken today, where and all that. I've just had a very good conversation uh, before I came to this show with uh, CS Malonza and PS Alsama Kelo, you know, working together with the uh, Minister of Interior, uh, Professor Kindiki, uh, and, and also uh, 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 P.S. Omolo, because as a government spokesman, I'm able to sit uh, in the cabinet committees, I'm able to sit in the PSS, so I'm able to get quite a number of information, and if you need any assistance, we can do so, and let's amplify that. I want to appeal uh, to the members of the four the state, help us also to amplify this message, because when we save one life, it's a generation that we have saved. All right. As we wind up on this conversation, what is the plan going forward to ensure that we don't get run ourselves into these late knee-jerk reactions, as some people are calling it online? Yeah, just like I had enumerated before, Trevor, number one, we need a proper bill so that it is anchored in law. We need the policy. Uh, we also have learned lessons. Like, now that we are here in Mombasa, just to give an example, Mombasa County seems to have learned a lot uh, from El Nino. So they even have, you know, warning system even for the planes, uh, uh, Mombasa County. You know, like I was with the team today and even the one that is manning even Tana River, you know, the whole of the coastal region with the regional commissioner. So we learn lessons, you know, from disasters of the past as a, as a country and that we are trying to do okay. and strengthen institutions because okay. in, an institution is a rule that, uh, you know, is consistent despite the passage of time. All so right. that then there is that predictability. And a good leader, Trevor builds upon the foundations of those who are before, before him. I believe that based on these two you know, uh, disasters of El Nino and this, we are improving on our response. Right. And that is why you find that the executive order number two uh, of 2023 anchored that directly under the office of the deputy president, Gadi Kashagwa. That's why you see him. We were with him uh, okay. you know, uh, at the Inferno in, uh, in, in, uh, in Mbakasi. If you can remember, today he was in Baimahiu. I am here to, in the coastal region. There are other people who are joining us, the first lady, the second lady. So we are learning and we are trying right. to do our best uh, going forward. Ono Mubaro, there's a lot of questions here, but let's just squeeze in one last one here. Gloria Ruoba says, how are you ensuring that you are complementing and not replacing county government budgets? No, 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 we, we can't. And I, I like my friend, the Senator Gloria Oruoba. You see, county government budgets already are there. We have already allocated uh, those resources. And so, therefore, like we are working, like now, Nairobi County is very critical. And they have already uh, presented a new uh, a, you know, request, like how many number of bridges, uh, you know, we have uh, been, been there. Uh, you know, Abdul Swamad, the governor, uh, you know, if you look at, for example, today in Akuru, uh, uh, Governor uh, uh, Susan Kiheka. So we, we are working very much in, uh, in tandem so that then we don't duplicate, we don't waste resources, right. because in any case, these resources are limited.
All right. Thank you so much for making time this evening. Honorable Isaac Maura, Government Spokesperson, Peter Murugor, Disaster Risk Reduction Manager, Kenya Red Cross, and Philip Omondi, Senior Climate Scientist at IGAD Climate Prediction and Application Center. We're taking a quick break. When you come back, we still have a lot more to cover for you. Stay with 